We're talking about peptides on the show today. My guest is Natalie Nidham. We met at an event out in Austin, a health event, and she knows all about peptides. It's her whole her whole gig. She's so informative. I was like, oh, girl, please come fill me in too. Like I had a lot to learn. I learned so much in this episode. So whether you maybe you know more about peptides than I do and you're like really into peptides, maybe this is your first time hearing even like the word peptide really besides some science class, you know what I mean? But wherever you're at on the spectrum, I know you're going to learn a lot today. So she breaks down what they are, how they work, what some of the common ones are, just like a lot of wisdom of experience, um, a lot of resources that I didn't know about. Um, she's getting into, um, just all the different, you know, studies or a little bit of research that we have. She's getting into bioregulator peptides. Um, Natalie's awesome. She's the host of the Biohacking Superhuman Performance podcast. Um, she's got a big Facebook group on this, which is the Optimizing Superhuman Performance group on Facebook. She's got some pr a private community. She's got a peptides crash course. She's just all up in the peptides world. So really informative. I love this episode. Um, if you want to find her, you can find her uh, website. It's natnidham.com, N-I-D-D-A-M. Um, and on Instagram, she is Natalie Nidham and it's Natalie with T-H. Okay. So let's get it all into it. we got some questions from my audience. I asked too. She's answering those really informative and helpful episode. And if you're curious at all about peptides and what they might be able to do for you. Okay. So peptides, I was telling you before we started, I'm like, I'm going to be a really great interviewer for the audience. Cause I'm not that educated on peptides. I have a very basic knowledge. I've looked in some of the different ones, you know, at BPC 157, I remember got really popular. I think Ben Greenfield kind of put that one on the map, like back in 2017 or maybe earlier, you know? And so there was kind of this interest in peptides and then they kind of waned and then it kind of got bigger. And now all of a sudden it's like, everybody's talking about peptides, like crazy. So for somebody who doesn't know what we're talking about at all. What mm -hmm. are peptides? What, yeah. what, what is this whole thing? It's a, it's a good <laughs> place to start. And it's a great question. So peptides are, a peptide is really a word for a small protein. All right. So to, to simplify this, we know that proteins run the body and the proteins in the body, like their hormones, their enzymes, they're all the different things. And they can be hundreds, if not thousands of strings of amino acids. So their amino acids are the building blocks of protein and that are like, and they're folded in these intricate kind of origami shapes that allows them to access receptors and do their jobs. What peptides are, are basically chains of amino acids that are 50 amino acids or less. Okay. okay? So by comparison, there's tiny little proteins. Yeah. Um, and then there's a subset of peptides, which we may or may not touch on today, which are the bioregulator peptides. Oh, we and those are only two to four amino acids long. Got so it. they are the teeniest, tiniest. And what those guys are, are essentially epigenetic switches. Wow. So what they do is they are able to cross the cellular membrane through the nuclear membrane, and then they bind to your DNA but they mm -hmm. bind to very specific sites. And it's actually kind of cool if you can imagine wow. it, because imagine a DNA helix kind of unwinding mm -hmm. and this little peptide comes in, their 3D structures kind of wraps in, attaches to a very specific site on the DNA, and mm -hmm. that upregulates the production of proteins. Wow. And so those, the bioregulator peptides upregulate the production of proteins that essentially rejuvenate and restore function to specific tissues, glands, and organs that they come from. Wow. Okay. So let's, we're definitely going to get more into the bioregulators Yeah. The bioregulators before cool. we go there. And that's going to be really fun. I can't wait. Um, <laughs> it, it, you know, traditionally, like now, I think if anyone's heard of peptides, they've heard of the ones that promote human yeah. growth hormone or the BPC one. Can you talk about what are some of the common ones that people have been using, what they do, and then like what your thoughts are on them? For sure. So the most common ones that people have probably heard of are BPC 157, thymosin beta 4, uh, CJC1295 and Ipamorel. And I mean, the bad news mm -hmm. is peptides suffer from a very, very poor naming convention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's a lot like alphabet soup. And I have people, you know, asking about what about that AGD57 yeah, right. <laughs> stuff? I'm like, yeah, that would be the <laughs> right. BPC. So to remember the name of BPC, it's body protective compound, which really speaks to what this peptide is. So I call yeah. this peptide the Swiss army knife of peptides. If you, mm. if you threw me on a desert island and said, Nat, you get one peptide, I would probably pick BPC157. Wow. 
So BPC 157's claim to fame is its ability to trigger healing in the body. It's really, really magical and it originates from gastric juice. Mm -hmm. And it and it's really amazing for healing the GI tract. And what yeah. I mean by the GI tract, I mean everything from your mouth to your bum. That's your GI tract, right? We all know our GI tract is really this tube that runs through the body that kind of goes down the throat, it expands into the stomach, it contracts back to the small intestine, the large intestine, the bowel, and out the anus. That tube is really the outside world. And what BPC-157 is really, really good at doing is initiating repair of that whole lining. Mm. And it and it was originally isolated from a, a, a gastric peptide. It lives in the gut. And the other thing about BPC-157, remember, it's, it's not gut protective pound, compound. It's not GPC. It's BPC. It's body protective compound. Mm. So it actually can have healing a lot of healing impact on almost the whole body. So for um, sports injuries, musculoskeletal injuries, it can be really, really good for that. It's and It's got anti-inflammatory properties. It has angiogenic properties, which means for tissue, for things like ligaments and tendons, it can help to bring blood flow to the injury where in a place where you don't really have a lot of blood flow. And um, for that, are you talking about injection or all taken orally or like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's a good question. So BPC-157 has special status. It can be taken orally. It can mm -hmm. be used by subcutaneous injection. Mm -hmm. It can be used um, topically on wounds and on mm -hmm. burns. Really mm -hmm. good for that. Mm -hmm. um, it can be used in a multi, it can be used intranasally. I mean, I don't love the intranasal use personally, but okay. it can be used intranasally. Um, so because of its origins, it um, it's, it's kind of like got special status. It doesn't get yeah. broken down the same way as another protein might in the gut. Do you find that the oral is like, is, do you have a preferred delivery or are you saying, yeah, inject it if you have a ligament thing or do, like across the board, I find that oral taking it orally helps with everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are yeah, your no, preferred I totally do. Uses? And that's a good, it's a really good question. I would say that generally speaking for gut issues, especially mm -hmm. the upper gut, oral is great. Mm -hmm. And it might just be enough, right? Okay. Okay. Um, for musculoskeletal issues, and even when you're getting into things like trying to support healing of Crohn's and colitis, so on its own, it's not going to do it. But as part mm -hmm. of a of a yeah. holistic package, if you will, yeah. Um, usually, there you're looking systemic systemic administration by subcutaneous injection. So that's like mm -hmm. with a little insulin needle. Yeah. That's going to be the most efficient way to deliver it, right? Mm. You're going to get the most bang for your buck. You don't need okay. as much dosage. Okay. Um, the next question that you might ask that a lot of people will ask is like, well, I mean, if so, if I have an injury in my elbow, do I need to get it right into the elbow or, or does it? Yeah. Right? Right. right. And so I would say that the world is a little split on that. Okay. There are people in my community who swear up, down and sideways that they inject it systemically. And the minute they put it it, like closer to the injury, they got better results. Okay. Then you get other people who are more on the professional side who would say, unless you're getting it right into the belly of the muscle or right into mm -hmm. the injury, and then you have to worry about hitting mm -hmm. nerves. You got to worry mm -hmm. about hitting blood vessels. So right. then you're talking about, you know, you're probably smart at that point to consult with a practitioner. Yeah. <laughs> a, understands anatomy really well, or right. he is going to work under imaging, right? Because yeah, there's, right. even, there's even doctors like Edwin Lee who have done, he did a clinical trial recently where he took a bunch of patients who had uh, knee pain and degradation, and he injected BPC-157 directly into the joint. Now he did mm. that under imaging, but yeah. he was able to show, in a, it was a very small trial uh -huh. in his office, but he was able to show that pretty much everybody had a reduction in pain. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. Super right cool. on. Yeah. That makes sense. Cause I, so I was like, all oh, renegade back in like 2017, I had just qualified for Boston and I had some like hamstring tendonitis and be, I mean, it was so new that if you're a biohacker, you're like, yep, I'll try it. Like, you know, Bring it. <laughs> it, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't super effective for me, but I had no idea what I was doing. Who knows if I even had quality product, you know what I mean? I was, I was being very exactly so, rogue so biohacker where, <laughs> for sure. So where you're getting your product is really important. And then yeah. dosing is another one. So dosing is yeah. all over the map because because for a number of reasons, number one, because you don't have a ton of human research 
there has been re human research, but it's been done in places like um, Croatia. Um, and mm. I think I think Croatia, there's a group that did a lot of really good human studies a while ago, but um, a lot of them aren't published. Some I okay. had heard a story very early in my journey with peptides, in my learning of peptides, I'd heard a story about a bunch of Croatian researchers that had done great studies on humans. But the mm. problem is that they hadn't done the, the studies on animals first. And oh. so they weren't able to publish their results because the peer reviewed journals are like, yeah, you're breaking the rules. You're not allowed oh. to do that. Right. Okay. You do not get to skip a step. Um, yeah. But, but I would say that dosing is a big thing. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, any doc I speak to on dosing, there's, there's almost equal doses of art and science to this. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. very often, like with an acute injury, like what you had, mm -hmm. you might have said, and especially when you don't really know and when you're kind of no. like, oh, I oh, just, <laughs> yeah. about this stuff, right. And so then you might like tentatively inject right. like maybe a hundred micrograms into your right. belly where an experienced practitioner right. might have injected directly into the injury. Right. And quite a high dose. Right. Right. Like, it, it's kind of like uh, taking, what would I say? Like uh, 10 uh, IU of uh, vitamin D. That's not going to really do much for you. <laughs> it's kind of like that. I don't, I don't really know about this stuff. So I'm matters. just going like, to take a little yeah. drop and then you're going to sit there and go, and it didn't do anything. <laughs> right. It, it doesn't work. It, you it, just do, don't know what you're it doesn't doing. work. Yeah, exactly. exactly. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Or That's even all. like people who use BPC 157 and expect it to heal their guts. And unfortunately, don't make, don't do all the other work. Now, BPC, you know, it's the, the, the reason why I think it's so favored is because it can often move the needle for people, even if they're not doing their part, but to get the full benefit of something like this, and mm -hmm. you've got gut issues, well, you need to understand why do I have gut issues? Yeah. Am I willing to remove the offending issues? Exactly. <laughs> right. Am I right. willing to actually sleep and manage my stress? And then- you know, can I provide the other nutrients that my gut also needs? Am I going to look at my microbiome? Like all right. of these things have to happen. Also. Yeah. The analogy I like to use on the gut and this BPC 157 could come in. This is what I tell people. I'm like, if I have road rash on my arm and my arm is just like all raw and open, and then I start pouring apple cider vinegar on it or some sort of acid on it every day, it's going to take a really long time for that to heal because I keep aggravating it. And that's how gut issues are. Like if you keep adding the quote unquote acid, you know, the yeah. foods that aren't agreeing with you. And then I'm like trying to pour BPC, I'm trying to put BPC 157 cream on it, but I keep putting acid on it. It's just like, it's that. That. It's like, yeah, okay. it's also you've got to stop aggravating it and allow it space and time to heal with these yeah. helpers. They can help with the process, but you can't keep pouring acid or eating yeah. the stuff that's like causing all the problems and thinking this is just going to do it for you. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> um, okay. BPC 157. Thank you. That was amazing. What other peptides, you know, maybe we could talk about, cause like, didn't Ipamorlin, Ipamorlin, I don't know how you pronounce it, but didn't that go off the market and like some Morlin came in? Oh no, Ipamorlin no. still. No, Ipamorelin is actually, Samorelin is. is the one that <laughs> kind of comes and goes. So Samorelin, Ipamorelin, okay. uh, CJC1295. Yeah. These are all a category of peptides called growth hormone secretagogues. So what growth hormone secretagogues are, it's, a, it's kind of like if you listen to it, right? Sounds like growth hormone secretion sort of. Right. So what they do is they signal your body to make, to produce and release growth hormone. So the cool thing about these guys is they don't really, they don't shut down your own growth hormone production because not the same way that Taking bringing in it. growth hormone from the outside yeah. comes in because now you have a feedback loop. Body says, oh, we have lots of growth right. hormone. What do we need to make it for? Right? Right. What we're doing here is we're signaling the body, hey, make some more. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And so in, in many ways, it's considered to be a lot safer. Yeah. You're also not going to get the bump in growth hormone that you would from exogenous right. growth hormone. Like nobody's going to, I mean, typically nobody's really going to turn into like big jacked kind of person just from using this stuff. I mean, I think you right. would probably have side effects before you got to that point. And the side yeah. effects of growth hormone secretagogues is, are very, they're basically the same as you would get from too much growth hormone, right? So you get Which swelling. Would be pain Willing. in the joints. Okay. Uh, sometimes people will say, oh, you know what? I think I got uh, carpal tunnel syndrome from my, from my growth hormone secretagogues. So that's where like they're having swelling. And so, you know, if that's happening, you've got, you're using too much 
The okay. other thing that can happen with this category of peptides is people can develop um, like an immune response, like a histamine response. So, you know, they, okay. it could be as, as minor as just like a little welt at the injection site that uh -huh. gets itchy and painful, or it can, it can actually escalate to affect the whole body. So having said that, you know, those are the downsides. Yeah. The upsides are that by improving your release of growth hormone, a lot of people would call these really great anti-aging peptides. Right. Longevity for sure. That's why I was interested because you, I mean, growth hormone, we, we hear growth hormone and we think muscle, right? Like our mind goes into this like body composition thing, but it's so much more than that. It's recovery, mm -hmm. it's regeneration, it's exactly. better sleep, it's, it's, it's just renewal, right? Like that's exactly. what- uh, it's repair. Hormone. It's right. repair and renewal. Right. It, um, it helps with better sleep. It helps mm -hmm. to, it supports lean mass and it supports the breakdown of fat mass. Yeah. Uh, sometimes like people will come to me sometimes and say, you know, well, well I, I need to lose some weight. Like, mm -hmm. where should I start? And, you know, we'll talk about the, the, the heavy hitters in a little while, like the, the semaglutides and terzepatides, but some for a lot of people. And, and I find this more with men, actually, all they need is that little bit of mm -hmm. growth hormone production mm -hmm. and they start to shred, especially if they're eating properly and exercising and sleeping and doing yeah. all the things. It can be really powerful. It's even got some cognitive benefits, right? Like yeah. you said, it's yeah. a full body kind of like right. you, once you have more growth hormone around, you have the ability to restore and repair and rejuvenate, like trigger the body in the absence of like serious whatever, right? Unless yeah. you've got like a lot of infections or if you've got a lot of inflammation or whatever the case may be, but it can be, it, that can be a pretty powerful intervention. I tried it once. I ha I still need to do this podcast, but there's a guy with a peptide clinic here and it's a long story, but we're get getting there. But he gave me through, you know, you have to get it through the dog, through them or whatever. And I, I tried Ipamorlin, um mm -hmm. for a little bit. And, um, it's the only time I've ever tried anything like that ever, you know, and I did notice when I was waking up in the morning, I mean, I I'm a deep sleeper anyway, like I'm like dead to the, I don't ever wake up and then I would go straight into deep, nice. but I noticed it even more. So I would wake up in the morning feeling like ecstatically happy, like just so recovered, so good. And I did notice that it was, it just felt easier to be like lean and strong just a just a tad you know totally. like it wasn't it like you a little big edge. thing yeah. yeah and so it was it was nice my mood was really great i felt really good i ran out of it and i didn't like redo it but my experience of it was very positive so good for you yeah, yeah. no that's great i mean i love hearing so and ipa morellan is the gentlest of the bunch okay yeah right I, so I, yeah it, it was, it's not it but it will very often get paired with cjc um, uh -huh. CJC is a bit stronger. It's, it, it acts through a different pathway. So CJC and acts through different pathways towards the same goal, which is always, it's always nice to go mm -hmm. at it a couple of different ways. Um, and, um, and, and that's even more powerful, but you know, if you got great results just with the epimorelin, yeah. Why yeah. do more? Like in my mind, right. the you know, do the least amount you can you need to do to get the maximum to get the best effect. And do you know of any like um concerns for women? Has that come up at all? Is there anything women versus men? Is is there any sort of gender things to be aware of on that or nothing you've come across? No. Not particularly. I think okay. you know, growth hormone's important for both. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Obviously. I mean, you don't want to, and I know that one of your listeners had asked about how long a person should be on peptides in general. Yeah. And these growth hormone secretagogues are no different. I always recommend people before they start, if they can get their IGF-1 levels uh, measured, which IGF-1 okay. is, it's one of the few analogs we have for growth hormone levels. Uh -huh. It's not perfect, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have IGF-1 is really high, maybe this isn't a great peptide for you, you probably don't need it. Right. right but, right. and then conversely, if your IGF one's quite low, then after, yeah. then I would say to test again after three months of use, Yeah, see where you're at before you decide to continue, you know, it, and yeah. again, here you've got practitioners who are like, ah, oh, you know, at a small dose, we'll keep an eye on things, but you can just stay on indefinitely. You get other people who say, yeah, you know, three months, take some time, take a month off. And there was actually a really interesting study that showed that in older men, they took them off for a month and those IGF-1 levels actually stayed 
pretty consistent okay. for the month off. So why not yeah. take a break, let the mm-hmm. body do its thing on its mm-hmm. own, totally. then, then come back and say, oh, you know what? I'm feeling like I need it again and then go again. Can you speak on the status of like, I'm sure people are thinking, okay, where do I get these? Can you speak on the status of like, is currently right now, do you have to go through like people get them through peptide clinic? How do you help people get peptides? Where do you refer people to? to So, I mean, look, I'm always going to suggest that people go through a a medical doctor, a practitioner, a clinic, whatever they can do. Right. Uh And at that level, then they're going to, they're going to be getting their peptides through compounding pharmacies. Now for any number of reasons, people may not be willing or able to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, And so then there are, you know, I would say there's a handful of what are classified as research labs that do a really good job. Like these guys really know what they're doing. Yeah. Um, And people will get their peptides from there. Yeah. The challenge is that next level down is a gong show. Like it's three ring circus. You've got all kinds of vendors sourcing peptides from all over the place. And I think at the end of the day, this could be the thing that really hurts peptides in the long run. Yeah. Um, But which is too bad because I will tell you that there are a couple of peptides that are not allowed to be sold even by compounding pharmacies because Mm. a drug company kind of patented it, Mm. but it's only available to be used for very specific things. And yet I know people who are, you know, walking around and functioning thanks to being able to get these peptides from a research lab. Mm. And so it's, you know, it's right. it, unfortunately things are moving at a snail's pace uh-huh. and it's, it would be so nice to be able to sit down with the authority, you know, with, with regulators and say, okay, look, here's what's happening, right? Yeah. Here are the people that are being helped. Here's what, right. what we're seeing. Right. Can we figure out a way to make yeah. this available to right. them so that they can you know, in a, in a safe way. So, yeah. you know, this is, this is a real hornet's nest and yeah, there's constant that. noise that the FDA is going to come down and right. shut, shut the whole ship down any day. Mm-hmm. And, you yeah. know, there's been, that noise has been going on for a number of years. My guess is eventually it's going to, it could happen. I mm-hmm. hope not, because mm-hmm. I think what will end up happening in that case is that the best is going to get the best, the biggest and the best are going to get taken out and mm-hmm. things are going to go further underground. And then it's going to be, it's, it's going to yeah. be like black market stuff. Right. Right. And, and, and then, and then you, you don't just, know. It's just harder to right. understand what, what mm-hmm. you're getting from where, but mm-hmm. I mean, look, if you're working with a functional medicine practitioner, yeah. Um, or a peptide clinic like you were, I mean, mm-hmm. those are going to always be the safest, best bets. The, yeah. the only challenge there is sometimes you get people who are just charging ridiculous money and it's, you know, people, if someone finds out that they could be getting the exact same product for a 10th mm-hmm. of the cost, right. it gets really hard for them right. to justify it. Right. Not to mention right. how hard it is to afford. Right. But what then people do don't know. It's like, is this a good source or is this one of those crappy sources? And you don't know, you know, so yeah, yeah, I, yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's tricky, sticky right now. Yeah. It's, it's very sticky. I'd so another, that- another peptide that people may have heard about that I think, you know, they might be, well, I'm sure they've heard about it because we've talked about two of the th- three, um, two of the three components of what's called the Wolverine, what would be referred to as a Wolverine stack, right? Mm -hmm. So this, this very powerful healing stack. So Mm -hmm. we've got the BPC-157, we've got the CJC epimorelin, and then the third leg is thymosin beta-4. And thymosin beta-4 is originally a thymus peptide. So it originates from the thymus gland, which, you know, is your, is an, is an immune organ or gland, if you will, in the body. But thymosin beta-4, like BPC-157, is a very powerful peptide to trigger healing in the body. Hmm. Okay. So not only does it have immune modulating properties, but it's also antifibrotic. It hmm. also helps with, with healing of tissue. Both BPC-157 and thymosin beta-4 are actually quite healing to the brain and to the nervous system, like myelin sheath. Hmm. Um the BPC-157 with the TB4 and CJC epimorelin for people who are training very hard, right. you can, they can do, and you know, you get a lot of people who'll do like a really tough eight to 12 week training cycle mm-hmm. and they'll use that triad 
and find that they're recovering much better. I bet. Right. Yeah. Um, but I would say that, you know, do they work? Hell yeah. I mean, they work so well that WADA has banned them. Mm. You know, the, the sad thing about that is that in BPC-157, you have something that actually, certainly in the animal trials, protects from traumatic brain injury. Mm. So wow. it's, you know, we all know what sports Shit. Yeah, might, no, might, exactly. might want to pay attention to this. And so <sighs> they did, they banned them. Oh God, don't tell which, me that. Which literally makes no sense, don't right? And, but it's yeah. another one of those things where you get, you know, you get people kind of sitting there going, well, there's not enough study. There's not enough clinical trials. Meanwhile, you've got guys <sighs> walking around with their- Ruining their lives. Yeah. Wrecking their lives, right? right. So, so they're quite frankly, <laughs> they don't actually have that much to lose. Yeah. <laughs> if you think yeah. about it. <laughs> Seriously. So, wow. Thanks for sharing that. Um, uh, I wanted to hit some of these questions that I, I asked my, I told you I asked some of yeah. my on social media. Um, one of them was, is it safe for people under 30 to take, and I'm assuming that he's talking growth about hormone. the growth hormone stuff. Is it safe for people under 30 or will it ruin the normal production of HGH? I guess you kind of already hit on that. Yeah. I, you know, it, it's not going to ruin the production of HGH. I would just say that people under 30, like, and, and this is goes for anybody who's thinking they want to use a peptide is you got to ask the question, why? Yeah. Do What's I need the problem this? I'm trying to solve? Right. right? And mm -hmm. am I trying to make up for crappy sleep habits? Am I trying to make up for bad diet or poor training or whatever the case may be? If the answer to any of those is yes, mm -hmm. then no, don't mm -hmm. use them. You know, mm -hmm. fix, fix your foundation first, mm -hmm. see what falls into place. Mm -hmm. And then if you still have, you know, you still need like a little bit of a lift or a boost or whatever, mm -hmm. maybe think about them. But, but guys, like, don't be looking at these as a silver bullet, like, like a they, steroid it kind of vibe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, that you vibe. know, <laughs> like a shortcut, right? Like, right. like, don't be like, you know, I recently was approached by someone and given the opportunity to, to literally take part in this gene splicing experiment where they were going to splice a gene, like inject something into my body that was going to do something to my DNA and inhibit my myostatin to make more, more muscle. Oh my gosh. And I was like, oh, wow, that's so cool. And then, and then I kind of like 10 minutes later went, wait, 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 wait a minute. Yeah. What do you mean by that? And he right. Goes, like what are the totally long-term implications? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about it. You know, like if it, if it starts to go sideways, we can inject this, this like bug into you and it'll deactivate. And oh I'm my like, God. yeah, I'm out. And yeah. So the thing. I got one body. Right. And right. I'm a biohacker, right? So right. I will absolutely try different things. I will right. absolutely <laughs> push the edge. Right. But you've got to ask yourself, like, how badly do I need this? Is there yeah. anything else I could be doing first? Right. Right. And then if I really need it, you know, my, my son had like a really bad burn on his foot. Did I put BPC 157 topically on his burn? Yeah, I did, mm -hmm. you know, to, to help him heal faster. And he was only like 20 at the time. Right. So mm -hmm. there's a time and a place. Yeah. But right. just be smart. Yeah. I love that. And then the last question I had kind of while well, we're still before we get into the bioregulators, because I really want to sure. get into this, was the question was, which one's best for people with heart diseases? Yeah. And so, I, don't know what your thoughts I mean, it's a great question and it's impossible mm -hmm. to answer. Okay. Right. <laughs> because, because I mean, off, I mean, BPC 157 is or considered organoprotective. It protects organs. It's good okay. for the kidneys. It's good for the liver. It's good for the pancreas. It's good for the heart. It has mm -hmm. been shown in clinical studies on animals to help normalize blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Um, but first of all, it depends what kind of heart disease. It right. depends what's driving the heart disease. Right. It depends how bad the heart disease is. Yeah. So thymosin beta-4 is another one. There are fragments of thymosin beta-4 that have been shown to be, again, in animal studies, to be really good for regenerating heart muscle. Okay. But. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. It's, no, it's, it's kind of like, like when somebody, somebody messaged me on, it's like, what kind of workout should I do? And I, I'm like, I, are you? I need a way more context, <laughs> way more, way, 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 like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like so, I mean, look, it's, 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 a, you know, the, the person who wrote that question probably is dealing with themselves or a family member that's dealing mm -hmm. with something serious. And they're like, oh my God, yeah. what do I do? Right. Yeah. I want to be and, safe. And, and we understand 
obviously that that people are looking for answers. And when you hear about things like peptides, they sound so powerful and they really are. But Mm -hmm. in a situation like that, when you're talking heart disease, like a medical condition, there are now enough medical doctors in the functional space working with peptides that you want to go see someone like that. You don't want to be biohacking this stuff. Yeah. And, and I'm also going to plug like what you do a little bit more too, for people who have more questions like that. Cause you have that, this community that is just yeah. blown up. Right. So they could join your, what is it called? So I've got two communities. I've got a community on Facebook called optimizing superhuman performance. And okay. you know, it's a little bit like peptides waiting to get shut down by the FDA. Like every second day I get a warning from Facebook saying, we don't like oh. what you're talking about. You oh. a post that goes against our community guidelines. Not that they'll show me the post, Um, you know, you could be shut down. Like, so that community has blossomed to 15,000 people right now. Like it's huge. It's wild and woolly and it's very, (laughs) but it is a fantastic community. Right. Uh So as a result in November, I launched a private membership community that's on mighty networks. It's much smaller. I'm able to interact more yeah. closely with the people there. I it's still yeah. quite reasonably priced. I mean, and I don't think it'll ever get super expensive, but that's another option for people as well. So how do they do they go to your website or how do they find that? Yeah, the best way to find the Mighty Networks community is go to natnidham.com. Yeah, and I'll there's like a, there's a tab at the top that says BSP community and okay. all the information's there. Okay, I'll link that. And then you have like a peptides crash course too. So if you just want I like do all of the nitty gritty, like that would be a great resource. So, yeah. and that's on your website. It's I'll, I'll link it guys, but Nidam is an I D D A M not Nidam. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, okay. Should we switch over into the bioregulators? Let's talk sure. about Sure. I mean, listen, what- we could sit with peptides for days, but we can definitely <laughs> switch over to the bioregulators. You are just a fountain of knowledge. Thank you. It's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's a um, so the bio, I, I've just been swimming in the peptide soup yeah. for, you know, a few years now. Yeah. But for the peptide bioregulators, so they're really interesting for a number of reasons. And aside from the whole epigenetic switch thing, which already, you know, always gets people's attention, like, wait, what? What do you mean? Yeah. That's it's crazy. Like they're, they're interested in the guard comes up at the same time. It's like, wait, that sounds really cool. Wait, is it okay? Wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so this is not the equivalent of gene splicing. This is not inserting yeah. genes into your yeah. genes, just to be clear. Um, and there's actually a peptide called GHKCU, the copper peptide, that is not- <laughs> The names. Tech- right? <laughs> it's, <laughs> so it's not technically classified as a bioregulator. However, yeah. this is a three amino acid peptide. Mm-hmm. And I just interviewed a doc the other day who's like, Nat, this is the skin bioregulator. Like it okay. 100%. It flips over a thousand genes and it flips Whoa. on youth genes and flips off aging genes. Like it's really- a very cool peptide, but its big superpower is skin rejuvenation. So that's GHK. So it's not a classic bioregulator. The classic bioregulators um, were discovered and were extensively studied on humans by a group in Russia, headed up by a doctor by the name of Dr. Vladimir Kavinson. And now we're talking 40 years of research here. So this is a guy who was in the military. He was approached by his superiors as a young medical doctor in the military and said, look, you know what? Our cosmonauts are coming back aged beyond their years. Mm. The guys are coming off the nuclear submarines, a hot mess. Um, And, you know, we know that there's weapons out there being developed that could blind people or whatever. We want you to figure out a way to restore restore people's health and rejuvenate them. And he's like, all right. And they told him, you know what, if you need money, here's a checkbook, go to town. And if you need human subjects after you've done your animal trials, we've got factories full of people that are suffering. So (laughs) go to town. And so he did. Right. And so he discovered this class of tiny little proteins that are, that originate from the tissues, glands, and organs in animals, they're Mm -hmm. able to extract them and refine them and reintroduce them into people. And what those little proteins do is they will go, they are attracted to to those tissues, glands, and organs. They Mm -hmm. bind to the DNA, like I explained earlier, Mm -hmm. and they upregulate the production of proteins that essentially rejuvenate and restore function to that specific tissue. So way cool. Yeah. Right. The, yeah. In that category, 
Um, the one that people may have heard of, I would say the most high profile bioregulator of the bunch is called epitalon or epitalon, or mm-hmm. it's also called endolutin and ep- epithalamin. And this is, so this is the other problem now. So with the peptides, you've got a bunch of, it, you've got alphabet soup with a bunch of numbers yeah. thrown in. With the bioregulators, you have every one of these compounds has like three or four different names, oh, wow. depending on whether you're looking at the synthetic v- v- yeah. variation or the biologic. Now, what okay. I will tell your audience, what's interesting about when you look at where these things come from, and you listen to people like Paul Saladino, who are expounding the virtues of eating organ meats, mm-hmm. guess what? Those bioregulator peptides originally come from organ meats. So when you're eating liver or heart yeah. or thymus or kidney, you're getting access to some of those peptides. It may not be as concentrated as you right. would get it from a supplement. Right. And certainly wouldn't be as concentrated as you would get from like the synthetic version. Mm-hmm. But at a very basic level, yeah. if anybody right. wants a good reason to eat organ meats, mm-hmm. that would be the first one. Wow. Um, okay. So that one, uh, can you explain a little bit more in detail? The what? epitalon? Yeah. yeah. So epitalon is the pineal gland bioregulator. So, and so why is that so exciting? So the pineal gland is a little pine nut shaped gland in the center of your brain. It is responsible for a lot, right? right yeah. It regulates circadian rhythm. Mm. It, nor- it, it regulates melatonin production and release, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it also is the referred to as the master endocrine regulator of the body. So it influences in a downstream way every one of the hormones, all of your hormone producing glands in your body in a modulating way, right? So one thing about the bioregulators, they have a very high safety profile because they are, they nor, they seek to normalize function. They don't boost, they don't depress, they normalize. The other thing that Epitalon is said to do and has been shown to do is that it activates an enzyme called telomerase. And telomerase is the enzyme that maintains the length of your telomeres, which is the ends on your DNA that you need those ends to remain healthy length, because Mm -hmm. once they get too short, your DNA can no longer replicate. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's, that's really powerful. Like what, what kind of, Cause I'm curious, I mean, definitely as a coach, my mind is like, okay, wait, hold on. So like, cause right, I, we're always thinking upstream, right? You got all these hormone issues and all this. It's like, so what have you seen? Have you seen like people with a bunch of hormone issues and stuff? Have you seen that be effective on regulating hormones? Yeah. So I mean, look, it, yeah, it's not like, it's not going to, it's not going to normalize everything. Let's do it clear. all for you. Right. But what I have seen, and so, so here's what's interesting about the bioregulators is they're not, they're generally not used on their own. Like one, mm-hmm. you won't, wouldn't generally use one bioregulator by itself. So okay. let's say you were working with someone and like a woman, right. Mm-hmm. And her female hormones are kind of out of whack. Yeah. Um, and you're sitting there going, okay, well, the ovaries could have a part in that, but you yeah. know that she's been really stressed. So right. the adrenal Adrenals. glands could right. be kind of struggling. Oh, the thyroid's struggling. Oh, yeah. And the thyroid's probably <laughs> trying to keep up or yeah. the adrenal's kind of dragging it down. Yeah. So what you right. might do is build a stack mm-hmm. that says, okay, let's do this. Let's use the pineal gland bioregulator as our kind of master mm-hmm. orchestrator, or orchestra mm-hmm. leader. And then let's give some love to the ovaries, to the adrenals, and to the thyroid. And what you're going to do at the same time is you're going to work on all the other stuff all the, as a all coach the, right. that you know is going to support those adrenals, Breath, the thyroid, rest, and, right? recovery, sleep, nutrition, yeah, minerals. All the sleep. Yeah. <laughs> you're right. going to stop running 27 miles a day. Like right. you're just going to cut that shit out, right? You're going right. to go to bed at a decent hour. You're right. going to breathe <laughs> right. to all the things, right? right? We're going to clean up your diet. Yeah. Um, and I will say that I have seen in the community women of, who were cycling who had stopped their cycle get their cycle back. Yeah. From that yeah. kind of a protocol. I've seen so, that when people get healthier quite a bit too. It's really fascinating. For sure. And then another one will be I will see people improve their sleep quite a lot with the pineal gland bioregulator. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right? Sleep. So yeah, it can it really sense. help to reset, but again, it'll yeah. help to reset your circadian rhythm as long as you're not fighting it. 
as long right, as you're right. not, you know, it's watching like, TV till three in the morning. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's reminding me of like glutathione. Like you could take some amazing high quality glutathione, you're all inflamed, but like, it's not going to do everything. It helps, but <laughs> you can't be You like, got to help it to help you. Yeah. Really? <laughs> right? Right. So, okay. but, but anyway, but then, you know, so other bioregulators, so we've, we've got adrenal, we've got thyroid. The thyroid is the best example of how modulatory these things are in the sense that you can use the thyroid bioregulator for a person who's either hyperthyroid or hypothyroid. Mm-hmm. And it's going to, it's going to try to normalize thyroid. Yeah, because it's just healing. It's uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so to be clear, don't be running out and buying this stuff and throwing your thyroid meds off to the right, side, right. And thinking you're going to just do this and your thyroid's going to grow back. <laughs> you're like, I don't want to be responsible for somebody <laughs> like <laughs> no, yeah. crashing and burning. <laughs> right. I mean, it's I have again, like I've seen in the community, I've seen people who've been able to reduce their thyroid meds, right? Yeah. Right. But right. it it depends. Like it just depends on how much damage has been done. It depends mm-hmm. on so many different factors. You know, I interviewed someone recently on my podcast, and she was talking about all these underlying infections that people are walking around with. And this is virtually everyone, like over 90% of the population wow. has some version of Epstein Barr virus or a herpetic right. virus, or uh, I mean, why is everybody getting shingles all of a sudden, right? right. Um, right. Or tick borne viruses or Lyme or like or mm-hmm. mold or any mm-hmm. of those things. Those those infections that we think are just dormant and inactive are actually re- influencing our immune system dramatically and in mm. her mind driving a lot of the chronic diseases that we're seeing show up later in life. Mm. And so if you think about it going back even to your analogy or my analogy of you know your house can't be on fire if you're sending a contractor in there because he's just not going to be he'll, he might be able to fix some stuff but it's going to burn down again like it's just not fixable. You know, it, it's how far into the foundation of wellness can we get mm-hmm. before these things can truly do the amazing things that they can do, right? Yeah. So right. they can help to shore up our defenses. There's a heart bioregulator. There's one for the kidneys, the pancreas, the liver. Blood vessels is really powerful for restoring the endothelium of blood vessels. Mm. Um, mm. All of these things are are really incredible. And depending on how far down that line of disease state people have gotten is how much, how fast and how much um, benefit people are going to get from them. How do people usually get by regulators? Is it through like their functional medicine doctor or these things people just buy? What's the path for those? Yeah, that's a really good question. So for the oral bioregulators, the capsules, they're considered mm-hmm. to be nutritional supplements. Okay. And so I direct people, there's a place in the UK, in London, they have a very close relationship with, with Dr. Kevinson. Mm-hmm. And they've created a brand because, you know, like, um, you know, the adrenal bioregulator in Russian is Adrenocort. And the original Kevinson packaging is a white box with Russian writing on it. And, okay. you know, that can be a bit alarming to people at custom <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> so, so what they've done is they've created a brand called Nature's Marvels. It's got a pretty picture okay. of a field on it. And, uh, <laughs> and it just says adrenal bioregulator on it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, wait, wait, what are they called? What's the- so it's the website is profound health.com. Okay. 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 And actually, if they can, I give them a discount code if they want. Yeah, it? yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. So you can use Longevity fifteen, which cool. will get you fifteen percent off your first order, and okay. then after that, they'll send you coupons for ten percent off and and whatever. And they else. ship internationally, obviously. And they ship internationally. Yeah. Um, but just know that you're not going to go in there and just buy one of this and one of that and one of the other. Like to do a proper hmm. kind of protocol, it depends on. Are you doing this just for maintenance? Because, and people will do that. They might mm-hmm. do a couple of rounds of Epitalon, for example, a year because they're, mm-hmm. they don't particularly have issues, but you know, you're kind yeah. of doing this ongoing maintenance. Yeah, right. And, and so then they might use three boxes the first month and three boxes the next month for people who have more ongoing issues. Mm-hmm. They might say, okay, well, I'm going to, you're going to do 30 days and then you're going to do 10 days a month for a few months after. Mm-hmm. Um, you get people like me who are in this clinical trial with a guy by the name of Bill Lawrence, and I'm cycling through anywhere from seven to nine bioregulators a month, just okay. 
You know, yeah. it's kind of like, think of it as like a full body renewal kind of thing. Right. Um, so yeah. And so, is this kind of info in your peptides crash course? So thing? this, so the first crash course is really just on, on the other alphabet soup uh-huh. peptides. I'm working on the bioregulator one okay. that's coming down. And then the other way to get bioregulators is as synthetic. So the synthetic bioregulators, what's happened there is they've isolated that two to four amino acid chain from the extract mm-hmm. and they've recreated it. They've resynthesized it in a lab. And those mm-hmm. synthetic bioregulators can either be administered subcutaneously or because they're so small, they they produce them as, as sublingual sprays. Okay. So Do you cool. have an opinion on synthetic versus biological? Yet? I've used both, uh-huh. right? Um, from what I understand from the literature in Russia, very often they'll use the synthetic first, particularly with people with autoimmune issues, because mm. there's less to react to. It's a cleaner wow. effect, okay. if you will. Interesting. Wow. Um, and then also if you're, they tend to act faster. Okay. The only thing is that the the effects don't necessarily last as long. Now, is okay. that because when we're getting the biologic, because it's an extract from that actual tissue, right. you also get a bunch of cofactors along with the peptide. Yeah. It's kind of like using your desiccated right. thyroid, right? Right. Wow. So fascinating. Um, okay. <sighs> Anything else that we should be aware of guys go to check out her website, not <laughs> um, you know what I mean? Like if you have more questions, cause that's great that you have that private community now. Cause they really want to like, okay, <laughs> dive in, like you yeah. have that available to them, but anything For else sure. that you feel like um, people should know? Yeah, I don't, I mean, look, I think that, I mean, definitely from a safety profile, from a comfort level, the bioregulators are, are much cleaner. Um, Okay. Option, right? Um, which is not to say that physicians and practitioners aren't really doing amazing things with the other peptides. Like yeah. even a peptide like thymosin alpha one, which is a which is an immune peptide, mm-hmm. there are dozens of clinical trials now that have been done on humans with you know, that bug that turned the whole world upside down for a couple Mm -hmm. of years. Mm -hmm. And they were able to show that in hospitals, they were able to reduce mortality dramatically using that one peptide. And yet it's, it's, it's been taken up by a drug company. It's called Zodaxin. It's only approved, I think for hepatitis B and C, Mm -hmm. you know, why is it not? And and what's mm-hmm. actually happened is the FDA has said to compounding pharmacies, you're no longer allowed to compound it. Wow. So go figure, you know, wow. like it's, 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 I mean, maybe there's a good logical explanation. I just <laughs> yeah. don't know what it is. You're trying to be real um, open-minded. <laughs> it's really, it's, it's, it's a struggle some days yeah. to understand what's yeah. driving people. Mm-hmm. So I don't, mm-hmm. I, you know, it's, there's no value in wading into that controversy. Right. Like there just isn't. So right. I just think that there are some, and, and it's really, it's also, it's a very powerful compound for people who are struggling with autoimmune issues. Mm. Um, Cause it really can help to bring up that innate immune system. Mm. So I think that, very cool. you know, pe- people will say peptides are super safe. They have no side effects. That's they do have, they can have side effects. Mm-hmm. Everything can have side effects. Something mm-hmm. can work really well for one person, not the other. Yeah. I would say that for someone who's listening, who really wants to um, go at gut health, there's an oral formula by a company actually in Australia called level up health. And okay. that's level with no ease. Actually, there's a podcast with the founder on my podcast from, I think it was September of 2022. Mm-hmm. And that that formula has your BPC-157. It has another peptide called KPV that's very anti-inflammatory. Mm-hmm. It has another one called lorazotide, which helps to seal the tight junctions. Nice. And wow. then it also has tributyrin, zinc carnosine, wow. like all these wow. different ingredients yeah, sounds awesome. for healing the gut. Yeah. Um, and what, what is that company called? Level so up it's, with it's no a, ease? Yeah. So LVL health. level, mm-hmm. LVL up health.com. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. And that one, I, I think it's not 10. They can save 10%. It's a okay. pricey, I'm, I'm not going to lie. It's a pricey supplement, but if you, uh-huh. if you look at what's in there, 
yeah. and you tried to go out and buy all that stuff, it would yeah. be like, it would cost you five times more. Oh, wow. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. That's why I'm like always trying to tell people, I'm like, you get what you pay for. Like the last thing in the world I ever want is the cheapest form of a supplement. I just know, I know that yeah. world. I've been in that world. I've been exposed. It's just like, it's more expensive for a reason. They would love to sell it for cheaper and be cheaper than the, but they yeah. can't because they did high quality science, high quality products. And so it's yeah. more expensive for a reason, you know, yeah. it's not, they're not being greedy. Like they well, they're not be very dusting. Exactly. Yeah. They're not very dusting ingredients. Right. Like, and to that end, I will give one little warning to people is there's a lot of zinc. Like he went with the therapeutic dose of zinc. Okay. So there are people who find that it makes them nauseous. Okay. So if you're that person, if you order it and you're that person, mm -hmm. either cut the dose in half okay. or take it like with food, try taking it with food, try cool. cutting the dose in half, like, you know, and BPC-157 okay. is as much as it's a, an incredible peptide and it's relatively safe, there's a very small portion of people where it can drive anxiety. Okay. So, you know, heads up. Yeah. I think what, what's important for people to remember, especially as a matter of fact, my crash course, which is being relaunched, mm -hmm. is going to be coming with a journal this time. Because mm -hmm. what's really important when you're right. using peptides, notice, track, like notice, right. write it down. Right. Like, write I it down. I love that. I mean, that's most of my coaching is that it's just like, just notice how things are impacting you. That's all. That's really all you have to do. You don't have yeah. to sit there and like think about it like crazy. Just notice. Oh, noted. Okay. And, yeah. And, and write it and write right. it down because it's not until you go back in your notes, mm. right? That you're going to realize, oh, well, that started here. I mean, right. I constantly get messages from people saying, you know, this just happened. Is it my peptide? I'm like, well, I don't know. I mean, right. <laughs> like right. maybe. Right? right. So when in doubt, stop yeah. all the new things, even if it's a new detergent, whatever, right. stop all the new things, right. wait right. for your symptoms to abate or treat or whatever the case may be. Yeah. And then what you do is you bring back one thing at a time. The bio, it's like the rule. It's like the one, first rule of biohacking. The golden rule. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And then also like, even for me, like I was trying some Kana microdosing. Uh, a friend of mine has a Kana company and it's Kana's legal. And I, I, I was in a, it's Kana is mood enhancing, you know, it's, it's a serotonin agonist. Right. So yeah, yeah. I was like, and my mood was down while I was using it. I was like, so I was messaging him. I'm like, have you ever seen that? He's like, no, I don't know. So where I go is like, I was like, where was I in my cycle though? Let me try it. During, maybe it wasn't even that maybe in what was I processing was emotionally in my life? Like it yeah. might not have been that. So I like waited and tried it again. And then I didn't have that. So it's like, that's how you kind of, it was like, it wasn't that it was something yeah. else, you know? And so, yeah. yeah, it's good to, but we have, you know, I think as a society, we have a reflex that says, I have something happened. It's this, is, yeah. we have to blame something or something, right? <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's wrapped up with the immediate gratification <laughs> problem. Totally. <laughs> yep. 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 I love that you're doing that. I love the journal and yeah, I guess we'll go ahead. Uh, so let me make sure people know like where to find you. So you have your podcast. What is it called again? The health? Yeah, it, it uses the whole alphabet. I apologize, everybody. It's called Biohacking <laughs> Superhuman Performance. <laughs> okay, Biohacking Superhuman Performance, which is amazing. Then you have your group on Facebook, which is yeah, called- Yeah, which is Optimizing Superhuman Performance. There's okay. a story behind that, but I won't bore you with it. Okay. And then there's the Mighty Networks group, which is the BSP community. But that one, just go to natnidham.com yeah. and, okay. and you'll find a tab for that. And the okay. and there's information about the peptide course in the mighty in on okay. the website. If you join the mighty networks community as an annual member, you automatically get the peptide crash course. Oh, cool. Okay, so. cool. All right, we'll link that all up. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. For it was so nice to see you again. Amazing <laughs> cliff notes on peptides. Yeah, so good to see you. Thank you, Nat. Thank you, Tara.